Live again, uh, Facebook Live. I'm not sure if this is our fourth one or fifth one, but today we're gonna share something with you. We're gonna teach you how to make a burnable fuel out of any uh, fermented liquid. That could be mead that you wanna take to uh, a higher grain of alcohol for fuel. This is very important. Um, we are not trying to bootleg this. No pun on words there. Um, and give you this for like an alcohol consumption thing because there's a lot of dangers involved with that the heads and the tails or you hear all kinds of stories of people going blind and everything else so i want to share this with you guys for the simple matter if you need to make fuel for your weed eater not your standard weed eater but there are weed eaters out there that are all fuel burners and if you just needed to make heat by burning alcohol you could take sugar and water and ferment it and make alcohol a lot cheaper than you could make gas for your weed eater and not be reliant on the whole petroleum machine that works so weird against us all. So I'm gonna take you through the parts right here and I'm gonna show you what's going on. Uh, Sam, she's over here, she's the background, she's gonna get all the computer stuff going. So what you have in front of you here is a really simple diagram. What you see, this tube right here in front of you, it's not as big as it is there, but I wanted to make it really clear. What we have set up is we have a pump and a thing of water. It's pumping water up through a three-quarter inch pipe. It's pumping the water through the pipe and out the other end. Inserted inside of that pipe is another pipe. That's copper coil. And that's hooked up to a pressure cooker. There's mead inside of there that's being heated up. As it vaporizes, it's going to go through the tube and the cooling water that's circulating around it is going to vaporize it. It's going to come out in a jar at the end as a burnable fuel, about 53% alcohol. If you do it through it again, that's what will happen and you'll basically be able to get it. So here's a gaseous vapor. Here's what's in front of us right here. First off, a couple of things of mead I've been sitting on for a while here. That's uh, wine made from honey and you're talking about millions of flowers right there in front of you that have been brought in and so that's fermented honey wine with about uh six percent volume seven percent volume of alcohol it could be a little higher but it's a wild yeast so we have a pressure cooker here we're gonna let it enter the pipe through here which we're gonna actually use some dough some bread dough and that's what's gonna seal that we're gonna show you how we do that and how we put this whole thing together so Mead, the sealer for the pressure cooker, a little one burner propane stove. Inside this bucket we have some water and we have a pump that we've adapted to a garden hose. That pump is now going up to our three quarter inch copper pipe. The water is going to go inside the pipe. It's going to circulate through the pipe and it's going to come back out of the pipe and drop back down into this basket of water that you see here in front of you. Um, so this is it if you look at it as a whole. This pipe that you see here, this is separate from the outside pipe. The outside pipe is simply a jacket on top of the one. So what I've done is I've actually used some epoxy on the end to seal it in a cap. If you look here, it's simply a T. This one is a little bit leaky because I didn't use a heat welder. I just used a welder in a bottle. It's another T here. And then it's brought to a simple hose adjuster here so I could screw a piece of hose on. And then the hose is hooked up to a small little low powered pump right here that's sitting in the, in the barrel of cool water. If I want to be more efficient, I'll throw an ice, uh, bag in there as well, which we'll probably do that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the mead and we're going to pour the mead inside of here and then we're going to seal this up with the dough. Sam, you want to come over here and I'll, I'll start that process up. And if you just stay at this angle here, um, has anybody joined us? Um, not yet. Okay, guys, so now we have, we're going to gently take this off of here so we can get it into position. We're going to take the lid off. We've got everything all balanced out here. Um, we are going to take our mead and we're going to pour our mead into this pot.
Here we go. Quite delicious. In fact, I think we're only going to do this one. Okay. So, we have a gallon of mead here. That wasn't hard cider? No, this was mead. Okay. That was a uh, special. We, we reused the, si the apple So cider. now let's look at this up closely um, so you can see this. So we have to get this just right. So we uh, put our pressure lid on here. We make sure we have it locked into place. We put our screws around the whole thing to make sure it's all locked up and solid. sure this sits all the way right down seated on there are we with everything else are we all lined up everywhere you want to take a look at it all here let me see it right here okay we were going down it here we are so now we have the meat inside of here we're going to light the fire Underneath it. Are you the dough on it? We're gonna put the dough on it in just a second. Okay, we're lit. Now we have it heating up. We have some dough, bread dough here simply. And what we're gonna do with that is now we're gonna take that and we're gonna seal it seal up the top right here. Zero waste blue. Right, we'll just feed this to the worms later on. We can dip our finger in there and smooth that all off. So let's, can you look at that up close, what I'm doing? That's bread dough. And so I'm dipping my hands in the same water I'm pumping with here. That's how we're making the seal on this to um, seal it up. Okay, so hold on just a second. Now, let me take this back again for a second. Here we go, guys. So what we've done, huh? What we've done is we have sealed the pressure, pressure cooker so that this line that's sealed from the water holds the gas. The water that flows around it through the vapor jacket cools and condenses it so that we're going to have our alcohol substance falling out at the other end. So I'm going to show you guys one more close up on there. We, uh, we put it there, we sealed it all up. We have a pressure cooker on top of a burner. That is going to the end where that pipe's going to drip out right into this jar right here when it's all said and done. So there's a hose connected to here and the water is circulating inside the jacket once it heats up to fall back out into the same thing here. Sam, would you love to uh, turn that on here? Okay, you don't, I don't have to be in it. Really simple. Water's flowing from here through the jacket. Well, actually, excuse me. It's flowing from here through the jacket and then back down to where it's coming from. Really simple. It's a sleeve that's around a straight piece of copper tubing. That copper tubing will then allow the condensed material to drip out into this jar afterwards. There's a slight leak on there. 
because I did not heat seal this copper tubing. I just used it really simple. Oh, what's this in the background? That's one of Ed Lewis's uh, magic little things there. Yeah, check it out. Making family heirlooms out of trash. So when I, I'm gonna give everybody the final message here. So that's it in a nutshell, guys. That's what we wanted to share with you today for today's Facebook Live. Um, and we can wanted to reach questions? out. Excuse me? Can I ask questions? You can ask questions. I don't understand how this works in terms of why, why even do it like this. Okay, so one of the questions we've been asked here today is how does this work and what's actually going on here? So in this pressure cooker, we have mead, which is wine made from honey. Wine made from honey has alcohol in it. That alcohol, 12%, 12% this actually is not 12%. This is about 7%, 7 to 10%. We didn't even use yeast. We just used the natural yeast that was found on the hive to make that mead. So we put it in the pot. We're heating it up in the pot. As it heats up, vapors condense at different points. What's gonna condense first at the lowest amount of heat is gonna be the alcohol and some of the other um, gases that are in there. And you just guys, you guys caught me at the moment. There's, I different can't Different even... types of alcohol. They are, there's phenol and, They're all alcohols. huh? They're all alcohols. They all are all alcohols. Okay, we're not, so basically, I'm just trying to make this really simple for everybody that you realize there's a burnable fuel out of this. I don't want to get into any technicalities of what type of alcohols are coming out of here because I don't want to have any liability with anybody in all ethanol. honesty. What's that? One of the main ones is ethanol, which ethanol. is a biofuel. A biofuel, there you go. That's used in our gasoline and a lot of the states have passed that as a burnable fuel and it's added like 10% into gasoline mixes. Some people don't like it because it has a lot of water vapor and stuff with it and it damages rubber parts. So that same ethyl alcohol is the basis of what we're getting out of here. But there are some other things in there as well. And like I said, I don't want to get in depth. Uh, this is not something that I'm telling anyone to do for any type of consumption other than to have something that they can burn. So they can have heat water on a pot or they can run it through their weed eater if they're smart enough to take it to that next level. We'll actually help you along the way as that goes forward too. What but, kind of weed eaters? Any weed eaters? Um, so no, your standard weed eater will not burn it, but there are weed eaters and small engines out there that can burn any type of fuel, uh, including 90% uh, grain alcohol. So in knowing that, I think that we want to move people to thinking of the future and think, oh wow, how could we literally get off the gas industry? I can take my trash and my food scraps, if, if it has a high enough sugar content in it, I can basically put it with some yeast in a bioreactor, turn it into alcohol. A bioreactor being, here let me show you guys. This is the bioreactor I'm talking about. It's really, really complicated. It's a jar with a little thing on the top that lets air bubbles out, but doesn't let air in there so you don't contaminate your yeast. Um, so it's not rocket science. We can basically take sugar and water and put it in here and fill this up. And a week to two weeks later, we could basically take that, put it in this pot, and out of the other end right here is gonna drip out a burnable fuel. And so what we do with that burnable fuel, and I do not recommend drinking it. <clears throat> you heard that, right? So my point in that being, uh, yeah, this is what it's all about. So we're basically taking something, we're vaporizing it. The fact that the vapor is passing through a pipe and there is cold water circulating around that pipe, that's gonna make that vapor condense. Once that vapor condenses, it's gonna drip out of the end of our pipe over here into our jar. That's gonna be about anywhere at least 50% alcohol, which is gonna be burnable. And we will show you that later on. We're not going to let this whole process, it takes about 45 minutes to happen. We're not going to keep you on Facebook Live that long. So what we're going to do is we're going to add this to our club that we share with everyone, our Earth Stewards Club in the next level. And we're also, we'll probably have it available in some other way as well. Uh, what else should I say about that? Um, if you want the materials list and a complete diagram of how to set this up, you can join our Earth Stewards Club, which is free for the first month. We'll include a link in the description. I'm guessing you guys can all hear that, but if you didn't hear that, what she said was, um, if you join our Earth Stewards Club, I think the first month is free as well. Uh, I think it's like $3 a month. 
It supports what we do. All of that money goes back into our projects here, and you'll get a complete detailed list, materials, and instructions of how to do that as one of the, which is one of the many things we give out constantly and access to our courses. Um, and it's a way to support us and to support what we got going on. Another thing I want to point out is Rye Harris Surf Earth Technologies. Check it out on Instagram. Check it out on Facebook. I think today and tomorrow are their last two days for their uh, crowdfunding campaign. I think that's a Kickstarter campaign. And again, that's Earth Technologies. And they're striving to be the first zero waste surf facility. With surfing comes a lot of uh, trash that just comes along with our industry. It's part of uh, what we pay to play. But who really pays for it is the earth, not even us. So trying to be somewhat responsible about that and take some of our trash back in. There's people like Ryan out there and myself trying to influence people within the industry to actually let's let's evolve. Let's create a more sustainable surf industry and let's um, look at and think out of the box and try to you know think of things that are a little bit more eco-friendly, a lot more eco-friendly and ways to deal with it. Part of that is our Worms That Eat Styrofoam. I think we told you about that last time. Stay tuned, check it out. Uh, what else do we got going? Stay tuned also for our nonprofit rec centers, REC, Regenerative Education Centers. Those are gonna start popping up and we will keep you informed of what's going on with those and how you can support that. That's where all of our living um, worm fetal larva technology for uh, actually bioremediating the EPS is gonna go into that nonprofit so that we can share that with the world and free source that for everyone. Um, it also is gonna come with a whole lot of other education, creating people, uh, creating stewards, ambassadors of stewardship, I would say, sort of in a sense. And uh, yeah, I'm getting off track here, guys. So everyone, Awesome, Facebook Live, join us later on and you can get the rest of this, what's going on. Maybe we'll do another short one later and fill you in or it'll be on our site, I'm not sure. We'll be posting a video later of this. Yeah, and remember guys, livingearthsystems.com. Check us out on Instagram. My other one is Maui New Earth if you wanna look at surf pictures and stuff included with that. Um, yeah, see you guys around. Thank you so much for being part of this. Aloha.